Little remains on the surface of Dartmoor's once thriving mining industry, but the tradition of exploring underground remains. Delve under the surface of these rugged hills and you'll find pockets of underground caves and tunnels, an ideal playground for caving enthusiasts to explore. Well, every year, thousands of caves emerge unharmed, but occasionally accidents do happen. Now, this is the Devon Cave Rescue Organisation. They're on constant standby to help cavers who run into trouble. The team is entirely made up of volunteers, and today I'm joining them on a vital training exercise. I have to say, John, I didn't expect the entrance to the cave to look like this. I mean... Well, where is it? We're in what? a field of sheep. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I thought there'd be some, you know, massive cave entrances. No, the, like the cave entrances are right below us, Matt. We're standing on it, really, because the cave was uh, found at the bottom of a quarry. And the entrance is actually right behind you, Matt. It's that concrete pipe that sticks out. What, that so, tube there? Yeah, it? that's the one. Yeah, uh, it leads us down. Uh, the first shaft is about 30 foot, OK, and then we've uh, got a second shaft of about 20 foot, OK, and then we're down into the cave proper. One of the hardest things is safely getting someone out on a stretcher through narrow, confined spaces underground, and that's what we'll be practicing today. We've got our casualty. Yeah. Yeah. Here? Yeah, Look. yeah, this is Rowan, Hello. our casualty for the Rowan, day. Rowan, how are you doing, all right? All right. So how did you get the job of being the casualty, then? John. <laughs> Tom him into it. OK, and with it being a training exercise, then, we will have no idea where Rowan is. Correct, yeah, we're going to send him off, we're going to take, somebody's going to take them in there, OK, and uh, leave them somewhere out of the way, and we'll find them later on. We'll search the cave and recover. So with Rowan in place, it's time for me to go down 50 feet into the cave, aptly named Baker's Pit. Right, we've got this uh, little tunnel that winds its way even deeper down through all of this limestone. Right. I'll have to get squeezed through that little hole there, do I? It's a testing environment for the rescue team to operate in. <laughs> a real challenge to get casualties, you know, through situations like this. Well, you'll see how hard it's going to be for us to get a stretcher through here soon. Yeah, and we're going down. Yeah, that's down this straight way. down under that boulder. It's wonderful. As we're training today, I've time to stop and admire the cave. Oh, oh, look at this. This tiny little passage that we've been wriggling through has opened up into this beautiful, beautiful cavern. It's fantastic, isn't it? It's stalactite formations, flowstone over here on your right. Yeah. So the guys will go off, started to search now and uh, trying yeah. to see if they can uh, pick up the casualty. Now the area that we're searching is just down here to the right hand That's side. That's right, yeah, so we can come and continue down. Yeah. Hang on, lads. I think, I think we've got something down the bottom here, have we? Okay. Hello, Rowan. Hello. Yeah. Guys, we've got him. He's at the bottom of the, the main chamber here. Hello, mate. How are you doing? Now, if this were a real rescue, chances are the casualty would be suffering from mild hypothermia. So we're practicing by assessing Rowan's injuries and safely getting him onto a stretcher and then out of the cave as quickly as possible. So stretcher's in next. Ready, brace, slide. That's it. And yeah. now begins the difficult journey back to the surface. Yeah, Is it? Yeah. yeah, slippiness here. And all are. of this practice pays off. Three years ago, the Devon rescue team were called out to rescue someone with suspected spinal injuries in a cave not far from here. Emily Selleck slipped and fell on her back. As far as I'm aware, they carried me across their back so as to get me out of the cave. Um, I was about 300 foot underground and... Um, and do you remember that? Do you remember being, you know, slid along and what have you? Um, I remember... Possibly, I remember lots of people being there, lots of faces, lots of noise going on. One person had a hold of my head. I remember it sort of, sometimes it was very jerky as they passed me from person to person, other times it was a very smooth ride. All the time everyone was chatting to me, keeping me as cheerful as possible. Though I think the scariest part of getting me out was when we went up little climbs, um, when they actually had to kind of hoist me up. Um, I did feel at times I was going to fall out of the stretcher, did you? which yeah. um, you can't do because it's over your feet, so um, it's not possible. Emily's story is proof of just how vital this training exercise is. Rowan's finally brought safely to the surface. Well done. Brilliant stuff. <laughs> well done. Well, that is it for...
from Dartmoor. Next week, Julia and I will be getting into the spirit of Halloween with a visit to the forest of Borland in Lancashire, home to the infamous Pendle Witches. And John will be investigating plans to build thousands of new homes on the Green Belt and meeting the protesters who are determined to stop them. Hope you can join us then. Next Sunday's programme is back at the usual time of 7 o'clock.